Hi Tom's. Okay, it's been a bit of a stalling session. I had to make a tool and then I had it's went Tuesday night and Wednesday and Thursday and it's busy today. My father in law's in hospital and I had to go and get him clothes and stuff today. He's lost a huge amount of weight and all his clothes are hanging on him like a coat hanger, you know. So I had to go and get a load of clothes from him. But anyway, so we're back where we are. But I had a problem and here's the problem. These are these are a pair of calipers as most of you know, okay? And I can measure the wall thickness by putting that in and then that'll tell me here how thick that wall is. And if I go on down a bit, I need to open these up because I know it's going to get thicker. And as I go down further, I can determine the thickness of the wall by looking at that. But I've got a problem. When I get to there, I can't go any further. And that's about seven inches. Right, let me see now. I'll just tell you now what it is. To there, to there. It's about, it's about, seven, it's about seven inches, okay? So... That's the biggest calipers I have. So what am I going to do? The problem with is that I need to be able to go down on nine inches. So I can't get down to the bottom to measure the wall down here. So I went online to look for a pair of calipers and I couldn't find anything. And then I decided to build a pair of calipers and I went on to YouTube and the forums and I couldn't find anybody who had made a pair of calipers out of ply. I found guys who were making them out of steel, but I don't have any sh thin sheet steel here. But I've loads and loads of good quality plywood. So plywood it had to be. So I set this up and I cut loads of strips of ply. I ended up with this here, right? Now this is crude looking, okay? This is very crude. Where are we? There's it there. There's it there. It's very crude, but it's a pair of calipers because there's the teeth together at the end and the teeth together at the other end. And with these here, I can get in there and I go right down the side and I'm watching this here, watching between those two points will tell me where I am and I go right down to the bottom, of the, right to the, down to the bottom, right? And at the bottom of there, I'm, a, I'm way thick, I've got that there, but as I come up, I'm pulling these together here now and you can see them getting thinner as I come up, leave it wider there and then it goes back in thin again and that's where I am, and that's about the wall thickness I'm looking for now, they're about 10 mil. Okay, actually it's not about, it's about there, it's a wall thickness in about there, about, about 10 mil. So I've got my calipers made, they're rough, they're crude, as you can see, they're just made of plywood, screwed together. And it did, but it did my job, it got me out of a hole and it got those made. So when they were, these were drying and the wood was, the glue was setting up and stuff, I thought to myself, right, these are busy, you've got to be a prototype, you know what's going to happen with these? These are going to be set to the side. And I'm going to make a really nice pair of these. And in five years' time, I'll need a pair of long reach calipers, and these will still be sitting on the, against the wall there. So I'll just use these. I, you don't end up not. I don't end up not making the thing. These work, so I'm not going to make another pair pro probably. So what do I do? So I thought to myself, who is the expert on hollowing? And a Simon Hope, who made this tool here, right? Which I'm absolutely loving, absolutely loving it. Simon Hope, and I wanted a tool rest for getting into the inside of this here. So I looked up his tool rests, and there's one that I'll probably get next week to get me in, because when you, the further in you go, the more vibration you get as you go over the, over the end of the tool rest. So when I got to about here, where are we, about here, which is about four inches down, I started getting a bit of vibration, so I had to get, this, get the platform inside. But anyway, I was looking at tool rests, and I thought, calipers. Simon Hope is the very man who's going to have a set of calipers that'll do my job. And I looked it up and sure enough he did have a set of calipers, very fancy calipers indeed, quite expensive, but I thought to myself, birthday money coming my way and this could be the very job. So I thought, right, I'm going to buy those calipers whenever I get my birthday money. <laughs> See? So I come out here and on the way out to the shed I was thinking to myself, do those calipers look familiar that I saw online there? And I went over to my caliper drawer, or my measuring drawer, and look what's in the measuring drawer. The Simon Hope calipers that I saw that I was going to buy. <laughs> and there they are. And these are really classy. What they've got is, I can you see that there? Maybe you can't see that very, oh there's it there. You can see they've got, they've got graduations there. So whenever this, as you go in and these teeth open up, as that opens up, you can see it there. This moves across and tells you how thick the wall is. Really precise. I can see it there. 
you can see the make naught right up to 20 20 mil so with this here i can get in here and just go right down the side and the whole way down and getting an accurate measurement the whole way down and everything is just hunky dory so i've got another i've got another 15 mil to take off this 10 mil there about 15 mil further down and about nine mil here so that's made my job a lot easier with these here so I buy tools then put them away because they're too good to leave out in case a damp gets at them and then I forget about them. <laughs> so there we are, the salmon hook calibers that I was going to buy and I've got them. Those are those have got a reach of ten inches. They're ten inches from here to here. You know? Anyway, I think they're about forty five quid. So but they're they're a super tool. You can get a smaller pair as well, which I think I'll probably get, because those are really accurate. I'm glad it with these. So there you go, that's where we are. So What's the, what's the procedure now? I'm going to see Seamus Cassidy. What did I say? Hold on a second. I'll we'll just do something here. Um, I'll turn that up. I'll put that up here. So I'm not looking. So it's not looking up my nose. Right, here we are. Oh, we're getting somewhere now. I'll get this up higher. That's better now. Okay, so. I'll just turn this down a wee bit. Oh, where are we at? That's it there. That's there. Right. So, tomorrow I'm going to the Woodshed in Temple Patrick because Seamus Cassidy from County Meath is coming up to do a demo for Ulster Wood Turning, which will be very good. He's always really good. I've seen him a couple of times. And then on Sunday, I'm going to get back into this again. And I would hope to have it completely hollowed on Sunday and the lid on and glued on for Monday and then I can finish the shaping on the outside and then I can get in touch with the lady this is for to ask about finish. Um, I'm not too sure whether to go for an oil finish or a wax finish or a wax and oil finish, you know, so we'll discuss that later on, you know, but we're nearly at the end of the project here and uh, I'm happy enough the way it's going, you know. The critical part is now when I'm making it thinner, but what's really good is I have stabilized all those knots with super glue and I've stabilized them on the inside as well. And as I cut down the inside, I put more super glue in. So I don't want to see a knot flying out and then even a hole in the side of it, you know. So everything's pretty stable and sound, so I'm happy with that, you know. That was my only, that was really the only worry when I, got, when I started to hollow that I find something horrible inside. So it's going dead on, I'm happy enough, you know. And I think it, it, I don't know if it's told, this is larch, it wasn't ash, it was larch. Ricky was here and he looked and said, that's larch. And I went, really? And I showed him the bark and he went, yep, that's larch. I had, I had no idea what it was. You know, I'm not very good at identifying wood. So, that's where we are, folks. I'm sorry there have been very few, there's been no videos for the last few days, but I've just been up in, up in my eyes with other stuff and uh, getting this. But also, it's not a bad, even though it's very dry, it's not a bad thing to let it sit for a couple of days, just to let it dry out from the inside a bit. So that whenever I go again, it's not going to move too much when I take the next load of stuff out of it. Um, wood moves, it just moves, that's what it does, you know, even though it's really, really dry. Now, when I was hollowing this, the stuff coming out was dry, but you just know there's more moisture on the inside than the outside, so there's going to be an equilibrium thing, sort of thing going on. So I've listened, get gives it a chance to be got um, the leak where Lindrium is stabilised on it, or settled, and then we can get stuck into getting it nicely finished off and sanded and finished. So I should have this finished, this should be finished, finished tomorrow, Sunday be finished cutting, hollowing, Monday start shaping, and after Monday they put in the finish on and stuff, so without, barring any disasters, it should be ready on Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, because I have to go on Tuesday, I'm going out on Tuesday night. So, we'll see you anyway, we'll see you anyway, okay? So there you go, folks. All right, all the best now, bye-bye. Thank you for watching. I'm going in now to watch the, it'll be, well, it'll be on later on, the January the 6th thing you saw was on last night, you know? I'm going to watch the post-mortems about that last night. All right, all the best now, bye-bye.